Right, different kind of videos now because I want to upload twice a week and it's impossible to do two modifications a week. So I came up with a little idea of Vlog Wednesday where basically because I drive to college every Tuesday and it's just recording time I could use and um, basically today I'm just gonna give you an insight of what it's like living with an EP3 daily with a loud exhaust it is raining because this is Surrey and it's cold but I don't want to put my heater on because it might mess up the audio so yeah great oh. So yeah, daily driving the EP3, not that bad, honestly, it's not terrible. If you stay out of VTEC, fuel is okay. Um, it's comfortable enough to just do what you gotta do with. I've got a 40 minute drive to college and it goes on the motorway, blah, blah, blah. But the exhaust, it does get a bit much sometimes, especially on the motorway, as you will see. It gets a bit droney, the exhaust does, um, at speed. Yeah, when you're at the run, you're on the motorway, it's quite hard to talk to your passengers and all that stuff. But when you're on your own, it's all right. Well, whilst we're here, might as well get onto another subject that I've been seeing on the forums a lot at the moment. What to look out for when buying an EP3? Well, they are like incredibly, incredibly reliable cars, but they've still got things to look out for. So, number one is rust. Check the rear arches, the seals, if they're bubbling or anything, there's a bit of rust and you don't know how deep it's gone. So, I'm not saying avoid it, but they might be blagging it a bit if it's a rusty motor, so and EP3s do suffer from rust quite bad. If you've seen the um, arch ceiling video, I was quite lucky with how mine is. Um, number two thing to look out for, chain rattle on start-up. So on initial start-up from cold, don't confuse it with the starter motor sneeze, because the sneeze is just, it's like, half a second long and it kind of just goes <laughs> and that's it but the chain rattle will last for a fair few seconds and it will sound kind of tingy not like a sneeze if that's the case that means the cha uh, chain's gonna need to be done if you're looking at one and that's about a 500 odd quid job that that's two things uh, third thing clutch the clutch on the EP3 wants to be fair it wants to be fairly light and fairly high that's a healthy clutch if it's quite heavy and the bite's low that's a that's a sign of an unhealthy clutch or an unhealthy slave cylinder and well the clutch isn't that expensive to do but still it's not saying you want to do after you just bought one and then also leading on from the clutch, 
you want to look for the uh, for any gearbox issues. From cold, the gearboxes are normally quite stiff. Mine is stiff from cold, but when you're high in the rev with a warm engine, they don't want to be stiff or crunchy. Also, if you've got a crunch from lower revs, <coughs> that's a that's a dead sinker, I think. <coughs> and you'll either need to rebuild it or get a new one and then that's, that's not cheap at all either. Um, service history, obviously that's a no-brainer. If it's been maintained well, that's a bonus. Don't worry about what mileage it's on. If it's on low mileage but has not been looked after, it will not be in as good a condition as a 200,000 one with immaculate history. So, mileage, does not matter. Um, that's all I can really think of, really. Um, tires, if it's got four even tires around it, that's good. That's been enthusiast owned. If it's got budgets, it probably hasn't. Um, yeah, just any signs of a dodgy car really you want to look out for but they're the main things I'd say clutch gearbox timing chain and um, rust that's pretty much it I'd say so as you can tell now I'm just casually driving the EP3 it's not bad I don't know how loud you can hear the exhaust <coughs> I'll have to re uh, re watch this video when I'm editing it. But I'm putting it along at about 2000 RPM stuck behind a car carrier, and it's alright. It's alright. I don't know if you can hear the rattling as well, but my back box is rattling. And when my engine gets fully up to temp and, it, and it's wet, it will start knocking on the bottom of my car really bad. So, can't wait for that. Uh, also, there are, I don't really know what to call it, I think, like, you can prevent stuff in the long run. Like, I check my oil once or twice a week, just because I'm, I'm, I'm scared of getting it too low or just damaging anything. Um, and as you can see there, I let my car warm up for about five minutes before every drive, because if you drive it from cold, the oil is still at a high, thick viscosity because it is it's, it's cold, and it's not going to be running around the engine as well as it should. So I don't know. I, no, no, no damage should come from it, but it's just one of them things to help it in the long run a bit, to help it last uh, that bit of that a bit longer. So it's good to do. It's a good practice to let your car warm up as well. Right, yeah, this is when the exhaust gets a little bit annoying. I'm at 50 miles an hour, about three, two and a half, three k revs, and it, it's a droney boy. It really is. We're just gonna get on the motorway in a minute, and this is where it gets fun. Headaches. 
no, it's not that bad. So yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know how this video is going to turn out, but hopefully it goes all right. And I plan on doing this every Wednesday, and I just want to get better at it, a bit more comfortable vlogging, just talking in whilst driving in the car. But yeah, if this video is a little bit boring, just excuse me, please. <clears throat> because this is my first time actually trying to vlog. So, peace out. Hello! Welcome back to Modify Weekly, everybody. And today, I've unwrapped it, so I've got, you've got to see it in my hand. We've got a K-tuned idle air assist valve delete. Um, looks fairly simple, because it's just this little ugly T-piece here and this bit here. So yeah, let's get straight into it. <laughs> 